guys. Welcome back to another episode of Sailing Papillon. Uh, as you can see, we've got a lot of rain that's been hitting us here in Marina Chiapas. But without further ado, we're going to jump into the biggest question of all, the chain plate job. So here we go. So got a good amount of uh, grinding done here today. We've got all our chain plates where they seem like they'll fit well enough that we can epoxy them in. We just need to uh, finish all the other prep work. Uh, I think over on the port side, the aft lower, I need to cut a little bit to get my alignment right because I wasn't thinking clearly when I cut it and that I kind of wanted to shift things, but is the hole down below, I have to get things to line up. So a little more cutting to do. Uh, down below to put the chain plates in, we still need to, to roughen up a bit. Uh, so that when we vacuum bag the chain plates in, it sticks really well because we don't want any of that to peel off. And uh, back to Ashley with the weather. My weather prediction is 99% chance of grinding with 100% chance of success. And yeah, we do succeed, but it does take a lot of work to get there. And like with weather predictions, sometimes you get a wrench thrown into your job or storm. That was no different with this chain plate renewal job. And uh, I think we need to explain a little bit about the difficulties of even getting to the point where we are now. Okay, so I think we've determined that this one, we're going to thin out the arms on the top and bottom so they can slide through our fiberglass sleeve here. And we're able to fit it in and not have to break into the wood cabinetry, which we don't really want to do. Um, this one we're still figuring out. This one is a-okay. Well, we, um, we're going to have him cut just a little bit off of this one. Yeah. Uh, this one, uh, I'll know for sure after I do some fiberglass cutting, which I need to put this piece in, so... <clears throat> Definitely heavier than the old one. Uh, I maybe should have communicated a little differently in how I said things worked. Because he asked if there were four that were the same. And then two that were different. And I told him that there were four of the same. Rather than telling him that there were... All different. All different. But there was one that was broken, which had a matching piece. It was one of these things where I was worried about being too specific and confusing things, but in the end... Uh, we need to be as specific as possible. Yeah. You excited we have chain plates? I am. Uh, we're just having a little bit of an issue because here... It's beautiful. It just needs to be polished from about here to here on all of them. So it might be a, a hindrance to getting our work done when we thought we were going to get done. So in addition to the thickness and the bending, we also needed to make some cuts into the arms of the chain plates. So we needed to modify the shape just a little bit. So back to the machine shop. We're hoping that our chain plates are ready for pickup. Let's go see if they are. Yeah? yeah? I have to clean this up a tiny bit, which means I'm going to have to leave follow. So before they were sitting more or less like that. Like that high. Let me get the camera angle. Right there. So they were sitting like, like that. Now they're like, in a hole. Happy. They're happy in their hole. Yeah. Uh. So because our new chain plates were actually made just overall a little bit thicker, we of course naturally had to grind down at the deck the hole that they go through. So the entire circumference all the way around was made larger and uh, we got that done pretty well. And as you can see here, Travis is going to town, not only sweating, but grinding completely smooth. 
and the overall result is actually quite nice afterwards. I, but yeah, um, this, <laughs> this job turned out to be quite larger than we ever expected simply because of the obstacles that we had to overcome. So, yeah. Been working in direct sunlight uh, here this morning. And despite being cool out in the shade, it is most definitely not cool in the sun. And like 15 minutes, I'm sweating more than I normally do after like two hours of work, so. All right, on to do the port side. I don't quite have the starboard done, but the bulk of it's done. So, whew, it is hot. So we've now reached step six, which is finally for us, the pretty step. Um, the step of polishing and making the part of the chain plate that extrudes from the top of the deck that needs to be a mirror finish, a mirror finish. And luckily we had a Home Depot nearby. We were able to pick up an orbital sander and Amazon Prime to the rescue. We were able to get the 3M paper that we needed to get this job done. So yay, final step of six, polishing. All right, so I've been working for the last couple of days on uh, our chain plates, getting them sanded and polished. Uh, this is our upper starboard and it holds our uh, rigging up to the top of the mast. With sandpaper, I started out with 40 grit and this little DeWalt uh, random orbit, which we just got over at Home Depot a few days ago uh, because we left all ours at home. This is 3M, which I can tell you works significantly better than the uh, Amazon special sandpaper, which I grabbed a pack where it gave me 40, 60, 80, all the way up to like a thousand grit in groups of 10. Well, those pieces of sandpaper last me like maybe five minutes. And the 3M, before it wears out, I'm probably getting 15 to 20 minutes of run time out of it. And I'm actually not going past the 3M 220. I have 120 and 223 M. Okay. After getting, doing 40 grit, 60, 80, 123M and then 223M. I am ready to use my black compound, uh, which mostly gets rid of the little tiny scratches left from sanding. And then I move on to the brown compound, which is a little less coarse than the black because the black leaves little tiny scratches you can see. And then lastly, I move on to this green compound, which is what I've got on my variable speed Harbor Freight Grinder, which has been holding up better than Ashley's, which died a couple days ago. This is our lower forward. You can see this is a lot less shiny than this one when I turn it up to you. But this one, I haven't used any of the compound. It has been sanded fairly fine. I think I'm at 220 and I may go up to 400. And that is getting me to where I have, yeah, as you can see, a nice little shine. Hopefully you can see that. What are we thinking? So this is what I'm worried about is that there's lots of little uh, bits of moisture. Pockets. Little tiny pockets of moisture and so my plan is to just sand this down. We can, if Ashley pulls at this with her fingernail, the little spot that I got to. So it's all this moisture that I'm worried about. I, as much as I hate to think about it, I really need to grind all this off. And then I'm glad we've got an extra five gallons of epoxy upstairs. That's uh, probably going to be uh, part of our barrier coat. It may not get down this trip and there's a additive that we should be doing uh, for a barrier coat to mix with the West System epoxy which makes it more water impermeable than standard epoxy which is quite impermeable. So and they recommend doing like three coats of that and then putting barrier coat over top of that. So I think that's probably what we'll end up doing. The nice thing is if I can get all this ground off before we leave the boat will have a couple months to fully dry. It's rudder. Oof. Yeah. There's so many patches that have been it's, done. It's a patch on top of a patch on top of a patch. You broke it open. What do you, what do you, walk me through that. What is that process so, like? So 
if right. we break this rudder open and uh, we cut along the edges here all the way around. So. And then the two layers of fiberglass will peel off the foam core. Yeah. I'm worried about there's stainless steel welded to this and there's fins that come out here. Oh makes it so when you turn the rudder post, the whole rudder turns, and if these welds fail, you can turn the rudder post and the rudder won't turn. Gotcha. Or the whole thing, it, there could be terrible corrosion right here and the thing could be ready to break off. Fortunately, it is a skeg hung rudder, so it's got a hinge on the bottom and one on the top, so it's a lot less likely to break. Uh, I've never really thought about it, the advantage of these until now? Now. <laughs> uh, there are definite disadvantages when it comes to maneuvering, but structurally this is less likely to break. Two issues come down to time and money. Do we have enough of either of them? Is this to rebuild is probably a multi-week process. Hmm. And I haven't done it. I know how it's done. Uh, and we do have a good uh, machine shop here, but this is a polished shine. <laughs> Looks like this was brought up to a, a nice shine. It, well, this has to be smooth. It, so, it, it. I don't know. So, the next morning, we decided to go ahead and start the other major project that we began on this trip, which was grinding our hull down to bare fiberglass. For any of you guys who have ever done this, you know what I'm talking about. It's a pretty nasty job, especially in a Tyvek suit in the summer. So we took a break from grinding on the bottom of the hull and turned our attention once more to our chain plate install. We got to mixing our epoxy and we actually went with the slow hardener, which was brilliant. Um, we also used, as you see here, micro balloons, which basically when mixed well, creates a peanut butter texture to your epoxy, which is really great when you're trying to fill voids or you don't want it running all over the place. So we started here and kind of filled in where we had some voids with just some um, chopped mat mixed in with the epoxy. And that worked really, really well. It also made a solid foundation for when we went to install and actually bolt in the chain plate. It already had something really tacky to adhere to, which I think was really helpful. And there you can see the run of the butyl that uh, we ran outside of the perimeter of where we were gonna be working and where the ultimately the uh, plastic was going to go for the vacuum bagging. And here Travis was putting in some fillets of um, epoxy resin and then here we have the sheets. We had, I think at this point, two, two or three sheets of Biax fiberglass. And here we're vacuum bagging. So if you're anything like me and wondering what the heck vacuum bagging is, it's pretty simple. Vacuum bagging is a technique used to create pressure on composite materials, such as fiberglass to help them cure and bond together. Your end result, if done properly, is a much more solid bond and structure. For us, using this technique on our chain plates was an absolute no-brainer. And Travis was using a stethoscope to listen for leaks. So right here, I can hear when I put this up, or at least, I, yep, I have a little air rushing through right here. So this was one of the areas I knew was going to be problematic. I think next time I'll put more butyl behind the chain plate to make sure I get a better seal. Yeah, definitely an issue here. Yep, it wouldn't be a boat project without issues. But don't worry, in true sailor fashion, we always figure things out. But more on that on the next episode. We'll see you next time. Cheers! What you up to out here, Ashley? Oh, you must have earplugs in.
We have given up on trying to find acetone by ourselves. We yeah. are going to go uh, check out the yard. We're hungry. <laughs> it's really loud. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. <laughs>